you. So thank you for joining me today. Um, Heidi Nelson, CEO of Duffy Health Centers. Um, so why don't you tell me a little bit about Duffy? Sure. Uh, Kevin, our mission at Duffy Health Center is to improve the quality of life for people who are experiencing homelessness through health care. We are a primary medical care provider, a doctor's office, um, but we also provide uh, um, a great deal of substance use disorder treatment services, mental health treatment, and then case management that wraps around those individuals that have the greatest challenges finding right. and keeping housing. Yeah. Awesome. And how did you, what's your background? How did you, how did you morph your way into CEO of, of Duffy? <laughs> well, um, I've always been a healthcare person. I've always been interested um, in healthcare. In college, I studied community health and worked. Uh, my first job out of college was to work in a health related, uh, small health related not for profit. And I learned um, through that work that I really liked working with doctors and nurses. I didn't want to be one. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think I could poke anybody with a needle, um, but uh, but I liked working with them. And so I went to graduate school to study hospital administration and worked in yeah. hospitals for a few years and then um, decided I really wanted more of a community focus. And so uh, left the hospital world to run a, a homeless health center in Chicago for 18 years uh, oh, wow. before I came here. So that must it's have been, been busy. Healthcare for the homeless has been my life's work. Oh, good. That's awesome. That's awesome. So when you became CEO of Duffy, right? New CEO comes in, you have these visions and and all this, you know, stuff and and then we get hit with opioid and, and COVID and homelessness and mental health. Like, has that changed over the years or have you kind of stayed the course? Yeah, in, uh, very good question. So we've grown a lot, Kevin, um, yeah. over the past 14 years. I started in 2010. Um, we had a budget of five million. Um, we had 60 employees. Uh, we served about 2,500 people a year. Um, and we just really sort of really looked at who it was that we were serving right. and strategically made the decision that, you know, we were taking really good care of the people who were staying at the shelter. But as you know, on the Cape, the issue really is more about housing stability. Mm -hmm. And there are many, many people on the Cape who live in seasonal housing, who lose their housing and have to move in with a friend or a family sure. member, um, people doubling up on a month-to-month -month lease, especially if there's mental health issues or substance use disorder issues in that household, um, they are eligible for Duffy services. So we grew to an annual patient population of about 30. 3,400. So we grew by about 20% in the number of people that we serve, but really focused on, as you mentioned, um, really enriching the service offerings that we had for those individuals. So um, you you talked about the opio opioid crisis 2015, 2016 was when that really started to emerge. Yeah. And we have um, for uh, since for 20 years now been treating opiate use disorder with medications, um, Suboxone and, and uh, also known as buprenorphine. And so the community looked to us to say, what can we do? And we were really a leading voice um, for Excellent. expanding those services in the community. And as a result, we attracted attention both from the federal government and the state government with additional resources to address the opiate use disorder crisis. Um, our growth really since 2015, 2016 has really been around mental health and mm. substance use uh, substance use disorder. And so you mentioned 3,400 patients per se. Like Now there's other community health centers across the Cape. Um, I mean, that, that numbers to me seems, it seems large, but when you're kind of out in the community, there seems to be like, there's so much more patients versus beds, I would say, like for lack of a better yes. word, right? Do, do you yeah. see that as well? 
yeah, yeah. So um, because of our scope where we focus on people that have housing challenges and the breadth of our services, we are necessarily smaller um, mm -hmm. than the other community health centers. So when you look at a Outer Cape Health Services, um, Community Health Center of yep. Cape Cod, Harbor Community Health Center, and then we have Island Healthcare over on Martha's Vineyard, um, their scope is really all primary care. So for example, okay. um, Outer Cape is the only primary care provider, right? On the lower right. Outer Cape. So they have 20, 25,000 patients that use their services every year. But, um, you know, people from all parts of the economic spectrum um, go to Outer Cape because they are the uh, primary health care provider for that for that area. So our focus, I agree with you, sometimes you think 3,500 people, wow, that's a lot of homeless people on the Cape. But at the same time, um, sometimes it, we're small. So sometimes we seem large. Sometimes we seem right. small when you compare us to the other health centers. But you also, you know, you like, you mentioned a couple of times. But you know, when you think of homeless, sometimes you think of just someone without a roof over the head. But you know, your definition of homeless is also people who have to, you know, go into someone else's home for a little while and then move and maybe go to seasonal housing and go. They might right. just not have a permanent location, right? Right. Right. Yeah. Great. And um, to the extent that, you know, something that we're seeing on the Cape more is um, seniors who are losing their housing, right, and may have to move in with their adult children. Yep. Um, and then the, on the other end of the age spectrum, we have young people who can't afford a place of their own, and so they end up living um, with their parents or with relatives. So right. um, a lot of different um, sort of manifestations of housing insecurity here, for sure. Crazy. Um, so, you know, obviously many challenges, right? So what, what are, what are your biggest challenges right now for, for Duffy? Well, um, my guess, I think that you've probably experienced this too, Kevin, is really workforce. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, I think, <laughs> um, since COVID, um, you know, since 2020, it's just been really interesting to see, um, we have not been impacted to the extent that you might see um, hospitals, for example, um, you know, having to bring on travelers, you know, traveling nurses, right. et cetera, et cetera. Um, but we have had um, significant vacancies, mostly on the clinical side in nursing. Um, and a lot of it is... Um, you know, uh, just availability. There aren't enough sure. nurses, right? In the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, even if we, um, th there's just there's just a limitation, a limited supply. Um, the other thing that we have seen is people making life decisions. You know that you know when you're faced with a pandemic and you have to stare at your navel for a year and a half, you right. know, trying to figure out your life. Um, you may decide that you don't want to stick people with needles anymore and you want right. to go do something different, you know. So um, the Commonwealth, um, our trade association, the Massachusetts League of Community Health Centers, um, a number of the organizations that we work with, there's a lot of focus on workforce and how we can bring more people, like for you, into the IT field. How can we yeah. bring more people into the healthcare field, and then what can we do from a recruitment and retention standpoint um, here at Duffy uh, to make our workplace as attractive as possible right. to candidates? Yeah. So here's something that just kind of—I mean, I know that what's going on um, up in Cambridge, uh, up in what's the uh, what's the health center that's closing up there? Is it? Oh, are you talking about Stewart? Stewart, yeah, yeah. yeah is yeah. is that is there an opportunity there for you guys, maybe? Yeah, yeah. So um, not necessarily for us because uh, the Cape is not in any of the steward service mm -hmm. areas. Um, but there was just an email that came across my email yesterday that because of these two hospitals closing, our statewide association is going to be hosting uh, a job fair sure. um, yeah. for those because working in a community health center is very different than working in a hospital. I would imagine. And um, there are many, many advantages. So, for example, regular hours, right? You mm -hmm. don't have to work the night shift on Saturday right. night. You also don't have to figure out how to lift a 250-pound man to, you know, give him a 
bath, right? Right, so, right, right, right. <laughs> um, <laughs> so there are some things that are really attractive um, about what we do. The other piece of it is um, really developing relationships with patients. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've, um, I've had, uh, you know, a couple of different providers here at the Cape, but now I've had my doctor I've had for three years now, and I think she knows who I am when I walk into right. the exam room, right? <laughs> so in primary care, you have the opportunity um, to create those kinds of relationships with your patients. Um, people who are nurse practitioners and RNs are often able to um, engage in providing services at a higher level than they might um, in the hospital setting where there's a little bit more control by doctors, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera. Um, so it really is a great environment for people to work in, but they just don't know about it, right? right, right, right. So um, hosting this job fair for uh, the Kearney and Neshoba Valley hospital staff is, is uh, as you suggest, it's a great strategy. Yeah, I believe 1,700 people getting laid off. Is that the number that I, Some, I saw? Uh, scary. Something like that, yeah. Scary. yeah. Well, they will all find jobs. They will yeah. all find jobs. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Awesome. Do you follow any business leaders, any authors, any podcasts? Yeah, yeah. I um, I think you know, Kevin, I'm retiring in, in a few months, in five months. And congratulations. And one, one of my goals, I do want to have another job after I retire, but I want it to be a job where I can drive around all day and listen to podcasts. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I, I would say one of my favorites is a woman by the name of Joan Gary, okay. G-A-R-R-Y. She was, there's an event um, that you might be familiar with or might not um, every day on the Cape called Philanthropy Day, mm -hmm. which is a day where all the not-for-profits get together at the resort center. There are 500 people there. We go to sessions all day, but there's also a keynote. And Joan Gary was the keynote in 2016, um, right? I think it was like the day before election day or the the okay. day of election day. <laughs> Um, so we were all, everybody was like, oh, what's going to happen? What's right? going to happen? Um, anyway, she was the keynote and she's just, she's funny. She's insightful. She's, um, irreverent, you know, she's just a really cool person. And so her, um, her thing is advising, um, just not for profit. She's, she's a consultant on not for profit leadership in general, okay. but yep. more specifically around fundraising. Um, and she has guests on her podcast. So, um, cool. she's some, when that comes across in my email, I try to hook that up in yep. my car right away. And it's home to you, right? That's, that's <laughs> yeah. what you guys, that's yeah. what you do. Yeah. That's awesome. I would also say, I think I'm not a big business book people person, but um, some a book that really resonates with me is Good to Great. Oh yeah. Um, yep. So you're, I'm sure you're familiar with Jim Collins. Mr. Jim and, Collins, absolutely. You know, getting, like a, lot, a lot of people have man crushes on Jim Collins. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, getting the right people on the bus. Yep. Um, the hedgehog concept we talk about here mm -hmm. regularly, just sort of sticking to your knitting, figuring out what your business is and, and, right. you know, just really being true to your core. Um, and then the other thing that really, you know, when we talk about growth at Duffy, I mentioned our, our budget was 5 million when I first came, it's now 15 million, That's right? So growth. we've, we've grown by three times. Well, crazy, except it's large, but um, I'm a believer in slow growth, right? Yep. In, 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 in moderation and, you know, not taking on more than, you know, than what we can handle. But there's also the Jim Collins concept of the flywheel. And so that's like the first time, you know, a flywheel in a car, I guess I'm not a mechanic, but the first time the flywheel goes around, it's really slow. Yeah. It's really slow. And then the more the flywheel turns around, the more momentum builds right, right, until right. at some point you're just cranking like this, right? Because yep. you have all this centrifugal force and, and momentum. And um, I, I am fond of saying that as I was alluding to earlier, we, um, you know, our reputation precedes us so that when we have success, 
um, working with a funder and they need something else to be done, they may turn sure. to us and ask, us, please do this. It's like you, you know, if you if you're successful in managing a, a, an implementation or a project for a customer, they're going to want to come back to you right, to ask right, you to right. do other projects as well. So we have um, we have really benefited from that. So I awesome. love the flywheel concept. Awesome, I love it. I love Jim Collins. <laughs> um, my my only technical question. What is your thoughts on AI and how is it going to affect your industry? <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah. Um, hasn't it been just an interesting journey? It felt it like has. AI was like under the radar for so many years. And then all of a sudden these products are released and people just go crazy about, yes. it's like, you're just now thinking about it when this has been in development for you know for tw however many years or whatever it's um it's crazy and where i've come down is that like everything in life you know there's a there's a good and there's a bad you know you have yep. to protect the, for uh from the harms that can be caused by new technology but we can also have um ex significant benefit right from what happens with technology so in healthcare I can only see the positive, really. Mm. I mean, there's so many um, opportunities. I'll, t I'll mention a couple, but one in particular we we're just talking about yesterday. Um, we are on a, a medical record system called Epic, mm -hmm. which is sort of like the premier yep. e electronic health record in the country. And they are soon to release a product called Ambient. So this is what is so cool, is you sit in your doctor's office, and your doctor calls up the app, turns on their phone, and you have a conversation. So instead of your doctor like having their their face in the computer sure. and they're not looking right, at you, right. yep. you're yep. having a conversation. It it not only it does it's not a proceeding, it's not a recording. AI takes that conversation and turns it into the note, the visit gotcha. note, yep, yep, which yep. is the document that we have to have in order to submit to an insurance company to do mm -hmm. our billing. And that is incredible that right. it weeds out all the, how are you today? We just got back from vacation. It weeds all that out, goes right to the problem, puts it in a note. Now, of course, the provider is going to have to read the note sure. and make sure that it says right, what, right, right. you know, what because there's medical liability associated with that. But what a blessing for the patient provider relationship. It's more conversational. And for the provider to not have to create a note after every yeah. single visit, it's just created for them. So um, that's just that's one cool. example of where we think AI is just going to be, and we're just using it now at Duffy. Um, there's a free tool that you can download to take minutes when yep. you do a Zoom meeting. So we just turn on the scribe or whatever we call it and uh, invite them to come to the meeting. <laughs> yep. And then uh, minutes and then are- And a summary you know, for you so you don't have to go through all the notes. You can get to just exactly. the key points. Exactly. Yeah, it's pretty I, I think cool. you, that, that app sounds super cool because I think if you, if you were to pull- Everybody in the world who goes to the doctor, their number one complaint is that the doctor has their face in the screen and they're not exactly. looking at you, you know, just eye to eye. Exactly. So that, that's, that's super cool. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'll wrap it up. I, I want to keep about maybe 20 minutes of yours and I'll okay. sort of let you kind of, but I got uh, four rapid fire questions for you. Oh, okay. All right. Are you ready for these? I didn't share these. I didn't share okay. these with you. <laughs> <laughs> Favorite movie. Oh, geez. I guess I'd have to say Tootsie. I love Tootsie. Tootsie. It's, it's all okay. about gender bending. It's Dustin Hoffman, okay? right? <laughs> Dustin Hoffman? Okay. Yes. Um, favorite go-to de-stressing activity? Uh, walking. I walk the okay. rail trail. Yep. Excellent. Uh, so not including this interview, what's the biggest <laughs> professional mistake that you made that you just look back and you just laugh? You're like, how could I be so silly? Maybe not oh, even a mistake, but just something God, silly. That Kevin, just there's so like, many. I just don't want them to be recorded. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you can skip that one if you want. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll, I'll call you later with that one. How's that? <laughs> okay, that's a good one. Um, your last question. Your first car. Uh, Honda Civic. Honda 1981. Civic. 1981. Okay. <laughs> long, 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 long time ago. Did, did long, you have long, the roll-up windows? Did it? No oh, power I'm windows, sure. right? 
Yeah, right? I'm sure. I'm sure. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. I will say that I did not make a mistake moving to Cape Cod. Let's put it that way. Can I say Excellent. the thing that I'm happiest about in my career is taking my skill set from a big health center in Chicago and applying it here. Must have been a little bit of a culture shock, though. Very big. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> in a awesome. positive in a positive way. Good. Good. Yeah. Well, thank you for joining me. Uh, I'll talk to you before then, but again, congratulations on your retirement. Uh, I think you're going to, uh, you'll do something. You'll find some podcast that you won't be able to yeah, stop listening so. to, but it'll be awesome. Kevin, it's, um, it's great working with you. Thank you so much. Thank and you. I just think it's great that you're doing this. It must be awesome. a lot of fun for you. It is. It is. I appreciate the time, Heidi. Okay. Take care, Kev. Thank Thanks. you. Bye-bye. Thanks.